So that was music from Rick Beato's composition in seven modes of the harmonic major scale. I've been a huge fan of his music and this piece in particular caught my attention. So I've been working on it. And I just wanted to show you some of the ways I worked out the fingerings and the hand distribution in this piece because I, it was a really neat challenge for me and I thought there were some, some great points on fingering in general that I could show you all. So the basic principle is to keep the left hand rather stationary and have the right hand do most of the work. So I do this because it's both easier to play and also more rhythmic. This is what I thought I was going to do at first. Left hand, right hand, and then left hand, right hand. So I was using these four notes as a position for my left hand. But I quickly realized that at a fast tempo, it's not really reliable because this is a stretch. So from five to three, stretching a fifth is kind of uncomfortable. So by distributing the hands in this way, where I'm choosing a more comfortable position for my left hand, and using my right hand for all the other notes, it's a lot more reliable and it's a lot more rhythmic. It's really interesting and complex because the turns and the leaps and the intervals between the notes create a different dimension of rhythm. And I want to try to bring that out with this hand distribution as well. So since I'm going to be playing this at a very fast tempo, hopefully, I want to avoid large leaps with just one hand. So in this case, I'll distribute it so that my left hand is only stretching from C to A flat. So here I had a few different options in mind. I tried switching over so I could play all of this with my left hand. But I felt that that's not reliable at a fast tempo. So I decided this is comfortable and beyond that I'm going to use my right hand. But since here, that's the first time there are two notes playing at one time. So I want to position myself so that it's easy to do that. And the solution that I found is to play that with the left hand, right hand, and then just play the A flat with the left hand. That way, my pinky will already be on the C, and I can play that octave comfortably. If I used my fourth finger for the C, my first and fifth finger are already at the fifth. And since the left hand is not playing when I'm playing the fifth, I have time to switch over to a new position. And I chose to use the thumb because I look at the next set of notes as this position. And because the A flat is included in this position, I'll use it with my second finger and then change over to the next position, which is G and D. cannot reach these notes with one hand. It's impossible for me. It would be great if I could because then I can just play that augmented triad with my left hand. But since I can't, I'm going to add the C with my left hand. And that's relatively okay because I'm just shifting over one note. From here to here. So what I'm doing with my right hand is that I'm playing the 5th with 1 and 5, then F and E with 2 1, that's comfortable. And when I play the E with my thumb, the F and G are already with fingers 2 and 3, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. And then here, I switch my position to this chord. And I like that because when I'm using my thumb on a black key, there's space around it. So I feel rather secure using that as an anchor. 
and then I'll be using my thumb to play F and G together. Otherwise, it would be uncomfortable to go like that. So to recap, let's see. So looking at the right hand here, I'm always trying to find a fingering that suits the natural position of the hand. So if I have fingers naturally over notes that I'm going to be playing, like here, I'm not going to change position. I'll wait until I can play all the notes, and then I'll change here, thumb to the next finger. And these are comfortable. And then I'll change again. Also, I want to check this at a faster tempo. Okay, that's okay. I'll switch over to the thumb on the D, this one, because I can get more notes after that. If I choose to play the D with the second finger, that limits what I can do afterwards. So even though it's in line with what I said before about I'll play something with the finger that's already there, I'll change my mind here because if I were to do that, I'm limited for the next notes. So you kind of have to see the context of, of which notes you're looking at. So I'll use the thumb here. So basically, fingering makes a huge difference in how you play a piece, and it's a fluid thing. It can constantly change. Even with this, in the first two days, I must have changed the fingerings in different parts at least three or four times. And that final take, uh, it must have taken me about two dozen times to get it right, so I have a long way to go. So I expect it to keep changing. But in general, the more analytical you are about which fingerings to use, the more reliable they will be um, throughout the course of you playing the piece. So that's all. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.